And so hello, welcome back. We're gonna just continue our discussion of open foam and we were discussing some turbulent uh, turbulent modeling. Uh, so we have discussed, you know, um, how we input those K boundary conditions. And yeah, we want to we see that in inputting the K boundary conditions there was this special boundary condition called turbulent I ca intensity kinetic energy inlet. And the intensity was 0 0.05, which is kind of convenient for us so that we don't even have to compute anything. But of course, we'll need to give it a, an initial kind of a value. And uh, this is something we'll need to calculate in a bit. All right, so let's see if the epsilon field, if the epsilon field has uh, epsilon boundary condition, <laughs> excuse me, epsilon uh, boundary condition has a similar thing, right? All right, so all right, so it says that in uh, the epsilon there's some uh, uniform zero point eight four three. Okay, so it's from some k omega model, so it's calculated slightly different. But um, inside the inlet, there's a fixed value being uh, put there. And it's the value of this internal field. And if you look at what the internal field is, this is uniform 0 0.84321. Okay, so um, we'll want to see, of course, if there is any you know, um, equivalent uh, wall function that is available for K where we can just put in the turbulent kinetic, uh, turbulent intensity. So gonna, yeah. And so after some fast forwarding, we find that yes, there is an equivalent thing for turbulent uh, mixing length and you excuse me get the rate of dissipation so in the open form user guide um, you will find that this uh, turbulent intensity kinetic energy boundary condition is defined as follows and you just enter it as such now if you want to do the same thing for epsilon the um, what do you call that the dissipation rate it is as such remember our correlation it was developed like this three c mu to the three quarters and k to the three halves um, and it's divided by some length l so 0 0.07 times the hydraulic mean diameter and this is exactly what is being shown here so very simple uh, we just have to type in this uh, turbulence mixing length dissipation rate inlet and give it a mixing length of whatever we need to calculate and in, in, in our scenario it is 0 0.07 times the hydraulic mean diameter and that's all we need to do so is this present in a, a tutorial folder yes it is um, so I've done some searching and you find that the inlet condition is as such the type is turbulent mixing length dissipation rate inlet and that the mixing length is here 0 0.005 and let's go copy and paste this over here so I'm just going to press delete and insert in the new boundary condition as follows so instead of 0 0.05 or 0 0.005 it should be 0 0.07 because our hydraulic mean diameter I believe it is one meter across the pipe Okay, so it's one meter pipe. One meter pipe. All right, so one meter times 0 0.07, that's a uh, mixing length of 0 0.07 meters. Okay, so based on this mixing length of 0 0.07 meters, we will get, uh, we will get um, our, our internal field. I mean, we, uh, we'll get our boundary condition. All right. Now we don't necessarily need to specify a value, okay? But uh, or we mean we may need to. Okay, this is the initial guess. Okay, so we'll need to give it a because uh, you'll need to give it an initial guess because this is an optional entry and this value is not an optional entry. So we all have to give it an initial guess. So for now, for now, the initial guess I will just put it as uh, value. And I'll just uh, put
put a dollar on the inter internal field because I don't want to type it twice. Right? This will just refer this back to the internal field. And yeah. And same thing for the epsilon law function. I just like to switch it around so that I only have to change the value one time and then that will be repeated throughout. Okay, internal field, internal field. Yep, I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna go K. Okay. And I'm gonna change this to internal field as well. Uh, let's see whether this needs a initial value. So it looks like we need an initial value as well. So we'll just specify that as the internal field. Okay, so um, again, I'll, I'll put this in the in the uh, description all right video description don't worry so this is how you're supposed to enter in your your field values or enter in the syntax properly so at least you have a guide and you're not so uh not so lost and it can be quite challenging to write all these up first okay so let me bring this all to the same just for the sake of neatness um so i'm going to put value and i'll put a few value of uh, internal field Okay, so value, internal, field. And let's put a semicolon there. The semicolons are ultra important. So, okay, I almost forgot the dollar sign. Dollar sign, internal field. Okay, same thing here. Dollar sign, internal field. Okay, so now, of course, we want to figure out what this internal field is. So it's a uniform of some number. And for that, we'll need to do, we'll really need to use our models. So this is our initial guess, of course. Uh, so let's, let's, uh, let's quickly just uh, take a look. Let's open up an Excel. I'll use my calculator sheet. Let's take a look at the models that we are putting in here. So taking note of this, okay, taking note of this, uh, how are we supposed to do our calculation? So let's let's find out our k value first. So we have an i entry and a u entry, and then I'll just put k, and that will equal to two, 3 over 2 times the value of i, oh, I need to square it, uh, or product, product, I and U, and I'll square this whole thing, and they'll be done. I is 0 0.05, naturally, and what is U? U is 0 0.1, and K will then be 3.75 times 10 to the minus 5. So we will want to put all this into the internal field. Okay, 3.75 E to the minus 5. 3.75 e minus 5 okay so that will be the internal field for k simple enough all right so now we will want this internal f the epsilon field right so epsilon so i will need a 0 0.09 the power of three quarters times whatever k is here to the power of uh how much three three halves and I want to divide by uh, whatever this is here and I'll just call that L and the L in our case it is 0 0.07 times the hydraulic mean diameter which is just one meter in our case so we just have a 5.39 times 10 to the minus 7 that's good enough okay so we are epsilon so 5.39 e to the minus 7 let's put that in 5.39 e minus 7 mm, I'm not going to care too much about the significant figures just want this thing to work and you know the simulation not to blow up all right so all looks okay now and let's see whether this thing can actually run so um, we have already seen all these, 
all these values. Uh, I'm gonna do an all clean on this thing, right? So uh, the next thing I wanna do is just you know instead of uh, having so much data because you know each of these folders is like what 22 megabytes or if not more uh, let's go and manage how often it writes so let's go to control dict so the end time I won't make it so long uh, let's say the 1000 seconds no 100 seconds will do Alright, so 100 seconds will do. We'll have more than enough data. Delta T is this much, yes. Right interval, we'll just leave it as that. Um, yeah, we, we don't want so much data. We just want a very short kind of a run to see whether this thing actually works. Or if not, maybe we should do a long simulation. Yeah, because remember, the last time it, it kind of blew up was uh, at about 300 plus seconds. So we'll want to maybe run this for a thousand seconds then. I'll do a thousand seconds. And then uh, I'll increase the inter write interval to 5000 5, so that we don't have so much data uh, that's being put into this folder. All right. So hopefully everything works. So let's run our mesh generation script, which is sometimes known as all run pre. So it's going to run snappy X mesh as usual. So once it runs snappy hex mesh, we want to see whether you know piezo form is going to take the inputs and spit out an error, or is it going to spit out results? So hopefully, of course, it spit, uh, spits out results. So I'm just going to fast forward. Hopefully, the snappy hex mesh uh, finishes in time. But yeah, fast forward it anyway. And lo and behold, snappy hex mesh has finished running. So let's see whether we can run uh, piezo form, peaceful, um, not peacefully, successfully this time. Let's just put a run. Okay, so, well, yeah. Okay, let me, let's uh, do a control C. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's see the log dot piezo form. Okay, so it looks like all is okay it's starting to iterate some loops so it looks like a 13 seconds per loop which is fine well, not too bad the coron number is pretty stable max is about 0 0.306 very nice very nice so it's not running overboard uh, so I'm just gonna do run n to run in background and of course uh, yeah we can check out our results later on so uh, yeah, so that's all I have for you this video. This is just a demonstration of how to put in some of the boundary conditions. So we have taken a look at the turbulent mixing length boundary condition and the, of course, the, uh, yeah, the K, the turbulent inlet kinetic energy discount boundary condition and we see what this dollar internal field is talking about. All right, so um, I'm putting all these links in the video no problem you won't get lost uh, then you know you know where to look for all these uh, resources because looking at them can be quite intimidating uh, totally understand that can get very lost trying to learn open form all right so uh, if you like this video please do subscribe leave a like in the in the uh, yeah just leave a like uh, we really appreciative of that so I'll see you guys next time uh, we'll discuss more aspects and of course, we'll want to see whether our pipe flow is uh, any good. Alright, hey, see you. Bye-bye.